What's up guys, Silent Mike back with another video. Today we're gonna to talk about what's been going on with my training, a little bit of my transformation, my rebuild of my strength, and my favorite way uh, to kind of train high frequency, favorite split program, whatever you wanna call it, and then some tips and tricks that I've been doing with my diet uh, to get a little bit leaner. Um, and I'm feeling really good. I think right now is probably my strongest and leanest combination ratio that I've ever been. So. Do me a favor, give this thing a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe, turn on notifications because we're dropping new videos Monday, Wednesday, and Saturday. Check out 50% Facts, my brand new podcast on iTunes, Spotify, anywhere you want to get into your podcast and let's dive in. So as uh, many of you guys have been following along, I have jumped into a little bit more weightlifting. Um, I started almost two years ago doing a little bit of weightlifting, but I was only doing it once or twice a week and that's obviously not enough dedication to the craft to get even semi-efficient at it. People spend years, multiple sessions a day to become great at it. Now my goal is not the Olympics, my goal is just to have a little bit of fun and, train, and change up my training. Um, but even still, if I was gonna do it, I didn't wanna half ass it anymore. So I decided to go five days a week with my guy Ben. Uh, we're basically training partners, but he still gives me a bunch of tips along the way. He's kinda the watchful eye over uh, what I'm doing. So. What's the best split to get strong? What's the best split to look good, et cetera, et cetera. There is no one best, and you guys kind of know that, but I get all these questions about push-pull legs, upper-lower, full body, and the truth is, is if you're a strength athlete, you have a certain amount of lifts that you handle best in terms of frequency, whether that's squat, bench, deadlift, you're squatting three times, benching three times, deadlifting twice, or whatever, or weightlifting, maybe you're clean and jerking, uh, competition lift twice a week, variations twice a week, you're snatching three times a week, and then you got a front squat, back squat, jerk work, overhead work, whatever. And then it's how you fit those into each other. If you're a little bit more of just kind of a strength enthusiast like myself, and you wanna look pretty good, be pretty strong, move pretty well, um, you can still do similar things, and then you kind of layer your split on top of that. So, you know, my frequency is really, really high right now. My volume's kind of moderate or lower. One, because I'm not efficient enough in the weight lifts to handle a high amount of volume. I'm too inefficient at the movements. Two, with my squats and deadlifts, um, because of my history with my back and kind of being a little beat up, I keep my intensity and frequency pretty high and my volume pretty low, and it seems to be fairly healthy that way. So I'm squatting five times a week. Um, I'm doing three back squats a week. One's a little bit of a rep day, often beltless. One's a little bit more also of a rep day with belt. And then one's a heavier day uh, with belt and sleeves. And then in between those two days, I'm doing front squats. One to mostly help the rack position. Um, I don't necessarily need the quad work. My quads are pretty strong right now. Uh, but it helps my front rack a lot, which again, in the long term, will help my uh, clean, which is a big goal of mine just to have fun with it. Now with the weight lifts, we have three main days. I'm snatching and clean and jerking Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm um, doing some variations, but getting better at the lift. And then Tuesday, Thursday, we're doing kind of technique work or things that I really need, kind of my overhead positioning, whether that be overhead squats, trying to get a little bit more depth and overhead room um, behind the head push press or in front of the head push press, just because I'm so poor in that rack position. And I'm also pretty bad at locking out, just something with my shoulders and elbows, bad habits of power lifting over the ten, last 10 years. With actual training itself, kind of hypertrophy stuff, I just gave myself a basic push-pull. So uh, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, uh, I'll often do some kind of chest press, some kind of shoulders, some kind of triceps. Tuesday, Thursday, and sometimes Saturday, I'll do some kind of pull. So I'm doing a row, a chin-up, and a bicep, uh, which basically means that every day in some nature of the form is a full body day because those days obviously layer over each other. In terms of nutrition, I think hopefully you guys all know by now the basics. Everyone says, well, how do you lose weight? How do you gain weight? Calorie surplus, calorie deficit. It's kind of like those guys at powerlifting meets or any other meet where they're just screaming cues that they've heard other coaches say, which is like fine, but people are like, spread your knees, get tight, uh, squeeze the bar. And they're just squeezing, they're just screaming those things out because they don't know what cue to actually say and they want to get involved. And I feel like that's what people do with nutrition. Uh, Clearly a calorie surplus is gonna make you gain weight. Clearly a calorie deficit is gonna make you lose weight. But what are some tips and tricks to allow you to get, uh, what are some tips and tricks to allow you to stay on your diet long term to allow you to fuel your performance and still feel good? I think that's more important and that's kind of where the individualness of a diet comes uh, into play. Obviously a surplus and deficit thermogenics are what's gonna 
apply the rule to everybody and the variation within the calories that we need aren't that crazy, but how do we stick to that mentally and physically to be optimal in our lifestyle? And things that have worked for me is obviously having some kind of prepped food. And everyone always preaches that meal prep Sunday. And that may not be for everybody, but for me, having food in my house that I know I can eat and also uh, not have too many calorie dense things because I tend to snack a lot. I just don't buy them. I just don't get them in the house. If I do go out for a treat, an ice cream cone here and there, fit it into my macros, I'll go out and get it and buy a singular version. Uh, another thing is always drinking liquids. Um, I'm staying as hydrated as I can all day long. Majority is coffee and water, sneaking a diet soda. I've been having a, a Gatorade Zero during my training, which is kind of a treat and kind of helps me do that. Um, and the third thing is just moving more. So the high frequency training allows me to burn some kind of calories and move outside every single day. And then the other thing is I did move into a location in a part of the city where I can ride my bike everywhere. And that's neat, you know, like not neat as in cool dude, but like in terms of long exercise, uh, calorie burning, you want to be able to walk further, take the stairs instead of the elevator, park your car further from the door, go on a walk with your dog, play with your kids, play with your dog, whatever it is, those little things really do add up. Luckily for me, I'm kind of a twitchy person. Um, so just moving around, riding my bike more has helped a ton. Um, the other thing too is that uh, my appetite, maybe I'm getting older, I don't know what it is, but my appetite has honestly just gone down a little bit. So it's kind of played in my favor to get a little bit leaner. It's really hot in the summer months up here in Northern California. It's been 100 degrees outside. That may play a role. Um, and then I just focus on that nutrition again. Uh, I've been really prioritizing getting some kind of veggies in and a lot of protein and then kind of fitting in the carbs around my training. Um, obviously if you've never tracked your food before, never tracked your macronutrients, I do suggest you do that once in your lifetime for maybe three months to even a year to handle and understand what kind of calories, macronutrients are in what types of food and what a real serving looks like. When I first did that, you know, nine years ago, it blew my mind how much cereal I was actually eating. You're eating like four servings, um, which could be over a hundred carbs, uh, just because you go by the bowl size and you're not going by what the weight or a cup or whatever it might be. And so I suggest people do that just to get into the habit of that and understand what kind of foods actually have a breakdown of carbs, protein, fat, what's actually a protein food. Because if you just go by the media, it's way skewed, calling peanut butter a protein snack and trail mix a healthy and granola being healthy. And the word healthy, not that they're unhealthy, but they tend to be calorie dense. And so if you're on limited calories, it's going to be difficult. Uh, overall, I'm feeling really good. Strength's coming back. Squat's feeling good. I'm a little banged up just because I am a little leaner and uh, quite frankly, I have a lot of miles on the body. So some of these weightlifting movements aren't super natural to me right now as my mobility has gotten even worse getting older and uh, powerlifting for 10 years. But uh, I'm still deadlifting once a week if it feels good. Squats are feeling good. And all the bodybuilding accessories are really allowing me to stay healthy as well as obviously getting as much sleep as I can. So hopefully you guys enjoyed a little dip into what's allowed me to stay leaner. My favorite split is right now and probably always has been even as a power lifter was the full body. And then I kind of switched things up with my accessories. There's some insight into what I do. Comment below what split or what you guys enjoyed. Some simple tips maybe that have helped you. Also comment below what you want me to cover in the next video. I appreciate you guys. Silent Mike. I'll catch you in the next one.